everyone, it's Maiba, and we're going to do our May vlog, um, talking a little bit about games I've played this month, um, some impressions, some new games, some upcoming stuff. Uh, I'm going to do uh, also my March Ask Maggie, which kind of stinks that I waited this long because I really love doing these, and by now I should have more questions, but I never got around to filming these. Or I, I technically filmed them twice and then didn't post them, so I'm excited to share them with you now. Um, First and foremost, I'm going to put some timestamps down below so you can skip through to what you like. Uh, but after that, uh, I have two new projects I'd like to tell you about on every other Friday. So coming up this Friday the 10th at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I am now appearing on a show on Twitch called Games on the Rocks. And this is me and three of my friends doing kind of a roundtable discussion about a topic, pretty loosey-goosey, and always with a tasty beverage in hand. Uh, so the coming one is Watch It Sit, which is a uh, white wine and hypnotic with cherry, lime, and a dash of ginger ale. Um, it was in honor of our friend Rodney up at Watch It Played, and it's the colors of the Canadian flag plus his blue meatballs. So I, I find it to be hilarious and fun. Um, we did a test run on YouTube and it came out really well and so we're doing them through Twitch and then we'll be loading them onto YouTube. Uh, looking forward to that. It's on twitch.tv slash meeples included as I said. And after that I um, next week I record and on the 27th I will premiere a new podcast. So this will be myself and a guy named Jason Hancock who is amazing. It's J-A underscore Hancock on Twitter. He runs his own podcast already called the Doc 94 podcast but I have stolen him away so he and I will be um, Briefly speaking about games we're playing, I mean, of course, and um, usually we'll have one big main topic and then something I kind of elbowed him into that I really am proud of. Uh, we stole the pivot questionnaire, which is what James Lipton used to ask of people at the end of every Inside the Actors Studio. I have taken those questions, I have rejiggered them, and so every time we have a guest, they will be forced to answer my questions. And for our first episode coming up on the 27th, uh, the Chit Chat Podcast, Tabletop Panorama, I think is what we called it, uh, will feature a Q&A from both me and Jason. We will answer our own questions first. And I'm really excited about that. I've never done a podcast, so it's been fun to set up. I have itinerary, and I have the questions, and I'm feeling very prepared. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I'm going to read out the questions, and then maybe at the end we'll do a little bit of, like, what have I been playing this week type stuff, because there are a couple of games that won't appear on this that will appear on that. <laughs> All right, so first question comes from Angie Smith. Andrew asks, what is your favorite game so far in 2016? He asked this back in March, which would have been much, much harder, but now that it's June, I have a lot more things I can answer. This one is a toss-up between two different games, and that is Mystic Veil vale and Millennium Blades. So Millennium Blades is a level 99 CCG simulator game where you practice going to tournaments, building decks, building seal pools, playing the game, and it's all very like tongue-in-cheek magic-y jokes, and it's kind of wild and crazy. It's real-time and multiplayer. I think in two-player you switch down to to turn-based, um, but it is fun, wackadoodle. Um, I would put it next to like something like Chaosmos in my collection, or if you were a Robo Rally fan or something, that's what I would couch it as. It's not a super serious strategy game, but it is definitely a good time. Uh, and the other one, Mystic Veil, vale, is about to come out from the Alderac Games. Uh, Mystic Veil vale is a card creation game, so instead of building your deck with more cards in it, you're going to build effects onto the cards you already have in a 20 card deck and build that. Uh, it is fun and crazy and it has a really nice pace to it. I cannot wait to have it and that doesn't come out until uh, this month. So it should be sometime here in June, everyone will get it and it's gonna be fabulous. Next up we have John asking, watching any good geeky TV shows lately? Any recommendations? He just started Orphan Black and he's loving it. Um, I would say geeky TV is, it's hard to couch because I 
I don't know what I watch that's geekier or not. Um, if it's got superheroes, I think that's kind of your easy line, but you never know about other stuff. But I would say the other kind of um, show that not a lot of people I've talked to have seen was Lost Girl. I absolutely love Lost Girl, and it was a diverse cast, and it was kind of kooky Canadian and a lot of fun, and there was a bisexual character. Like, it was, it was a great time. Uh, so... Ben asks, what's your best new filler? Uh, best new filler for me was probably, I guess say Archaeology. Archaeology is a really fun two to four player game where you have like kind of hand management set collection type thing. It's a remake of a previous version of it, but it added more like different uh, monuments and just a, a slight rules change, but it's really, really good. It's been following me around in my purse for, for weeks since my friend John gave it to me. Um, most surprising new game from Ben as well. He's got lots of these. Uh, most surprising... I mean, Mystic Veil was surprising, Millennium Blades was surprising, Tin Goose was surprising in the worst way. Uh, Dead Drop. Dead Drop is another one that I didn't expect to like, and I do quite like it. It's from Crash of Games, and it's just... It's filler before or after another game, but it's really delightfully mathy, kind of neat and fun, and just super simple to get people into. Most satisfying heavy game. Most satisfying heavy game. Uh, probably satisfying is the word that I'm going to pick out there because you want it to be something special. I, I think Russian Railroads has the most satisfying point structure for me. Uh, that one is definitely an engine builder. So you start and you're struggling to get five, six, seven points. And by the end of it, you're getting 120 points in a single turn. And that is surprisingly satisfying. <laughs> And most recent game you never want to play again, um, Ten Goose, I was super excited about, it's, um, it's a Rio Grande title, it's an auctioning kind of game, and unfortunately we found it to be surprisingly easy for one person to roll away with the game, like a little snowball, and if they get extra money, they just start outbidding you for planes, which gets some more money, and it just, you can't, um, it wasn't for me, it wasn't for my group, and the bidding is really what made the problem come around. So you can't take the central mechanic out. Uh, he then asks, uh, what is your favorite pie filling? And I would say my favorite pie filling is a savory vegetarian pie without mushrooms. You don't see that too often. I usually have to make that one. Um, I am a vegetarian, and I don't care for mushrooms, and apparently that is not common. So I just have to hope that they don't they don't stay in there. I just have to hope that I can find one that doesn't have like a ton of mushrooms or a ton of mushroom flavor in the gravy. It takes a while. Uh, next question is from Benny. Hello, Benny. Um, when is a game too micro? And I would say that a game is never too micro. For me, it is too micro after like less than 40 cards. I'm probably not going to enjoy it. Um, I don't like my micro games that micro. But uh, I'd say the micro game I played the most of was Province. I liked Province. It was kind of this neat little single meeple work placement game. But I wanted the deluxe version. I would have loved it because that game was just so... It was $10, but it, the components were awful. Um, I would have much rather had the $25 one that didn't fund recently. So I really like the game, though. Um, Brendan asks, any plans to record playthroughs of some games, tutorials, etc.? Um, eh, yeah, there, there are no definite plans at all for anything. At this point, I just plan what I'm going to do that day, whatever I feel like. Uh, I may go back to tutorials of playthroughs, but I found that they don't quite work with my conversational style. I'd much rather just blog and um, talk at you and you can just tune in and listen. <laughs> um, if I go back to playthroughs, I'm going to have to find a way to do it my own way and I don't know that there's too many ways to reinvent that wheel. Uh, I will let Rodney Smith and uh, Paul Grogan and whomever else wants to do playthroughs and I'll do everything else. Um, Chris, uh, who I think I have three questions from Chris, he asks... Uh, what are some games you're eager to see at U.S. distribution? Who would you like to see pick up those titles? Uh, I have two answers for this, and my first answer is always going to be Nornberg. It's just my perfunctory answer there because I think it's just a fabulous Andrew Stedding game, but he has not shown like consistency in the States for sales, so no one's really touching it. 
Um, and who would I like to see pick up the title? I, I think it would have been a great Tasty Minstrel game, but they're focusing more on, like, big out-of-print crazy stuff. So um, if I had my druthers right now, I think I would ask uh, Stonemeyer to pick it up. Uh, it's got unique meeples to it, and they could maybe do, like, a deluxe version with, like, acrylics or something, or heavy realistic cupcake meeple, meeples or something. I don't know. Uh, Nuremberg is amazing. Um, what were the big hits of retail this year? Any surprises? So it's halfway through 2016. I kind of just rejiggered my numbers because I always like to know what we're selling a lot of. And there are zero surprises. So it's, you know, Star Realms is doing well. Lost Cities does well at one store and not the other. Time Stories does well at one store and not the other. Panda Legacy does well at one store and not the other. It's so weird because our stores are really close that there's definitely dem demographic things that change what gets purchased where. Both stores, though, are selling, on average, a copy of Codenames every single day, so that's a pretty amazing feat. One store sells more cards games to me and than that, but, but that's still, like, top two games in those stores. And what unique licenses would you like to see as tabletop games from Chris again? And what team would make them happen? Like, designer, artist, publisher? Um, I know that there are Harry Potter games, but I would still always love my Harry Potter legacy game. I would love a Rob Davio Harry Potter legacy. I want to get sorted in a house and learn spells which allow me to do other things and I would like to take classes and join clubs and join the ministry. I don't know. I, I don't know how far it would have to go but I really love the idea that that world become something more viable. Um, and the other thing I would really like to see, um, there's only a very very small amount of, as I'd like to see more books turned into licenses. Uh, you definitely see um, uh, Pratchett, he's got a lot of games now, but uh, I would I would like to see Hitchhiker's Guide turned into, like the whole series turned into a series of board games. I love uh, The Wrinkle in Time, Madeline Langle. I love a Phantom Tollbooth uh, board game, but I do know that a lot of those games would have to be pointed toward children, um, but there is a way to do it. Well, you see The Little Prince, which is an Antoine Bowser game from a couple years ago, and it was like a tile lane game. The game was so good, so perfect. And they redid it with the new movie this year, and they, and they, could, they did not do a good job, but the original one, the little puzzle one, is really good. So I'd like to see more in that kind of vein. Um, I think most companies can handle IP things. It's just a matter of, like, Cryptozoic, IDW, G Gale Force 9, they all have so much experience speaking with the types of interests that IPs have that I know that they are the most likely. But they're doing an okay job. They're picking up good components and stuff like that. I'd like to see more companies be able to join in the realm to get the nicer wooden bits and stuff like that. But I understand that they want to appeal to the widest audience possible. Chris Darden asks, what other hobby fascinates you? Um, I would say of any hobby I wish I had that I actually don't really care for uh, is sports. I would love to find some sporting teams, some types of sports that I really enjoy following along and watching regularly. I like watching sports live. I like going to sports bars and kind of joining in the fun, cheering when you know goals happen or whatever. But I don't have that much fun watching by myself, and I don't have fun tracking it through like baseball fantasy football type stuff. Um, so I, I wish I had that a little bit. I still have never seen a hockey game in person, and I, I'm still going to go to a roller derby at some point, but I can't watch them on television by myself. Uh, so they, they do fascinate me. I just wish I had them. Um, Netters asks, which drinks pair well with which games? Also, which games are you looking forward to playing this year? Uh, drinks that pair well with games, I would say, always start with a beer or a cider or a glass of wine and then maybe switch to something slow and sippy like whiskey or scotch. Uh, we do weekly play over margaritas, which is a lot of fun, but we play typically just play card games, lighter stuff. Um, games I'm looking forward to this year. So the number one one on my mind right now is Star Trek Frontiers, which is the Mage Knight Star Trek combo, and I've told everyone that would listen to me that I was really excited about it. So uh, other than that, I know that this week My Village comes out, and I'm excited to try it, and Mystic Veil, vale, which I already know I like. I love to sit and get to play enough to not break it, but definitely put it to through its paces. Um, Seb asks, do you ever think we will reach a cap creation wise, like where games will all be similar and have no more originality or new views? I don't. 
I think um, if anything can teach us that there are always new ways of doing something, it is through novels or poetry that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and are still interesting and fresh and innovative. Um, movies are similar where you do have a lot of history now and you have a lot of remakes and re visions and stuff like that but you still find very innovative very new stuff so it's just going to be a matter of being able to find the good amongst the copies all right last question um todd asks which latest trend in gaming always in uh, most interests you something like bag building dice drafting legacy style games or app-based games um and this was asked in March, and it is currently June, and during March there was a number of dice drafting and bag building games that were definitely coming out, and for drafting action games in general, uh, Nippon, Grand Austria Hotel, and Signori were all out at the exact same time, and uh, Nippon got all my attention, and then Grand Austria stole a little bit of it, uh, so I haven't dove into Signori as much as I would like, but I really love when randomness is used in that manner, so it's not affecting your game negatively, it's just making interesting choices. Um, Legrand High used a very similar uh, dice drafting method as well as Grand Austria, so uh, I really, really enjoy that particular mechanic. Uh, Multi-use cards are always good. Uh, that's how you can sell me on a party game, because I backed one deck dungeon, which is a party game with lots of dice rolling, but it's multi-use cards, and you kind of decide where to allocate your resources, which are pretty darn limited. So I love that mechanic, and I will always love worker placement, and I don't know that there are... I guess app-based games are always a trend I like. It's not something I do a lot of. I don't play a lot of apps, but I like that they're there, and I enjoy when I don't have someone I want to play a game with around me. I can always kind of retreat into the app world, so it's good for me. So this last month was uh, a few new games amongst a lot of replays. So I played a lot of games, you know, second, third, fourth time. Uh, this month I have a lot of unplayed games in my house, so I have a lot of homework to do. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to still highlight, uh, Small City. We finally got it to the table a few times, and now I've got the rules down. Uh, we're a little afraid that uh, Clinique is slightly more fun. Clinique is a little harder to wrap your head around... Uh, the best move in a turn, but small city is harder to wrap your head around the rules. Uh, but we're having a lot of fun giving it a try. And then we got to play Ten Goose, which um, is a kind of an auctioning network building game. And unfortunately, if you start to pull ahead in that game, you get a little bit more money. You get to buy extra actions away from everyone else and that just gives you more money and prepares you better for the bad stuff that's coming and it's just a win more, win more, win more and that little snowball just keeps on rolling. So uh, it was my biggest disappointment. I am taking it to the board game swap in uh, late June here and uh, hoping that someone else is curious because it's definitely loved or hated on the internet right now. I didn't care for it but Someone might, I try not to give away games they don't see any value to, I just, um, I am bringing games that just don't work for me and mine. Um, and uh, we've replayed the Luvia project as well and it still holds up. No matter how many times I play the game, even though it's kind of samey from game to game, it's still really fun, meaty, good, interactive, perfect. Um, we had kind of a more laissez-faire type game on our hands where everyone kind of got to build their own thing out but it was it was a really good time uh, so any day now i will have a game of mars against uh mars needs mechanics <laughs> and i would very much like to get some more small city on the table and once i get mystic Vale, i will be having fun with that one as well uh, I have a new show, Games on the Rocks, on the 10th of June at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, twitch.tv slash meeples included. I have a new podcast coming up on the 27th called Chit Chat, um, Tabletop Panorama, and that will be going up on my website and shared to all my channels and stuff. And um, also, you can reach me on patreon.com slash maggiebot. You can help support me and support this channel. Uh, we are starting to work toward having a little bit of equipment upgrades. I'm about a quarter of the way to a GoPro Hero 4. Um, if I can get the rest of the way there by Gen Con, I will be super excited. Um, 
and I'm going to hopefully have some GameSpot money to help toward that. Um, if I can do that, I will be taking my GoPro to Gen Con. I may not get everything uploaded while I'm out there, but I will definitely get it uploaded when I'm back. Uh, you never know when I'm going to get up to, so it should be good times. Uh, after that, we are heading toward $300 a month and three videos guaranteed. Uh, we did plenty more than our two guaranteed videos here in May, but I would like to keep encouraging you to help support the channel because it's making so many things easier. Just having a couple games bought and paid for by someone else was, it was a damn treat. And so I salute you all and thank you for your support and your love. And I love you more. And I'll see you on the Twitters at MaggieBot and on all of the internets. Bye.